Hogwarts Legacy looks really good, not just because of the great HDR implementation, the game in general looks amazing in my opinion. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Markus and today we're talking about HDR in Hogwarts Legacy. Please keep in mind that I'm just testing the PlayStation 5 version today. I don't have any access to the Xbox version or PC version, so that means I can't talk about Dolby Vision today, but I'm very sure the game does not support native Dolby Vision, so it will be very similar to HGIG. But Warner Brothers, if you see this video, I would much appreciate to have some samples at some point. Thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, you know the drill. If you're new to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe. But now let's talk about HDR. The HDR implementation in this game is, in my opinion, really good. We have great specular highlights and we have almost zero black level rays. So what do I mean when I'm talking about almost zero black level rays? Because it appears that we have minor black level rays when you activate HDR. So that would means you need to decrease actually on an OLED TV the brightness from 50 to 49, at least on the PlayStation 5 and on my CX and G2. But in general, Black level rays is not an issue in the game. But this can change when you activate VRR, variable refresh rate. On the PlayStation 5, and I'm very sure on the Xbox as well, we have several or different performance modes from fidelity to fidelity with ray tracing to performance mode with unlocked frame rate and so on and so on. With VRR enabled, you can have additional elevated black levels in the game. This has nothing to do with HDR, this has nothing to do with the game. This is related to the display what you're using and it doesn't matter if you use an OLED screen or an LCD screen, it can happen on both technologies. So if you're experiencing heavily flickering, this is most likely because of VRR, has nothing to do with HDR. So the really good news is here that we have no issue with HDR black level rays in my opinion. And when I'm talking or when we're comparing HDR black level rays, then I'm always comparing this with the Callisto protocol, which by the way is according to my info still not fixed. But again, Hogwarts Legacy is just great in terms of contrast. The next good news is this game supports the HDR system level calibration on the PlayStation 5 and I'm very sure the same counts for the Xbox series. Put in the comment section please if this game also supports the Windows 11 HDR calibration app because again I can't verify this at this moment. The only weird thing is that even this game supports the HDR system level calibration app we still have our HDR maximum peak brightness slider in the game, but I have seen this also in games like Deathloop, where the game supports the system level calibration and you still have this slider. So all what you need to do is actually make sure your PlayStation and Xbox is set up in the correct way. I will put a link in the description on how to do it. And of course, I verified that this game supports the HDR system level calibration. I have set up my PlayStation 5 to the maximum value and the game reads 10,000 nits. Then I have set up my PlayStation 5 to the minimum value and the game reads just 100 nits. That proves a point, the HDR system level calibration is working with the game. And now let's talk about the HDR settings in Hogwarts Legacy and we talked already about the HDR white point setting and I proved the point that this setting is actually talking to the console. And if the game by any chance does not recognize the HDR settings on your console, make sure you set this up in the correct way. For the LG CX, this is around 800 candela. For the LG G2, the A95K, S95B around 1000 candela. For the Q95B and similar TVs, around 1500 candela. So let's talk about the user interface brightness setting and you can set up as you like it. The only thing what you need to consider is on OLED screens, if you set this too high, you may experience some image retention or in the worst case, burn in, but burn in is really very, very rare and really just a worst case. But there's something else what you need to consider. When you play a game on an OLED screen and you have a lot of very bright objects on the screen, you may already experience that the screen goes darker. The more bright objects you have on the screen actually, this is a limitation from OLED. That means the more user interface objects you have on the screen and the more bright they are, 
you will limit the maximum peak brightness of your OLED TV. That's why my recommendation is actually try to keep user interface objects on the screen, especially on OLED TVs, as dark as you can. Let's talk about the HDR brightness setting in the game and between zero and 100, there's almost no difference in specular highlights when we're talking about peak brightness now. Very minor difference. So that means feel absolutely free to set this up as you like it. The standard factory setting is 25. I found this is a good value to start with, but at some point I found it a little bit too dark, especially when you use HGHG. The last setting what we have in this game is the HDR black point setting, and there is no doubt about it that you should leave this at zero. I couldn't find any reason why you should increase this actually. I tested this on the CM on the G2 and also on my QN95B. As soon you increase this by just one step, you will have elevated black levels. So make sure this is set to zero. And now let's talk about a very weird behavior, what I found when I analyzed the maximum peak brightness in this game. So I tested the game on the LG G2 and we know the LG G2 has a maximum peak brightness of around 1000 candela. I have set up my PlayStation 5 with 15 clicks, which is around 1000 candela and the game actually reads around 980 candela, which also fits perfectly the screen. The problem was when I analyzed the maximum peak brightness, it was always much higher than 1000 candela. When I set up my PlayStation 5 with 15 clicks in the HDR calibration menu, which should be around 1000 nits, the maximum peak brightness, what I was able to measure was always around 1300 nits. The problem now is if I would like to hit 1000 nits in a game, I would need to increase the value manually or I would need to yeah, change my settings from let's say 15 clicks to 13 clicks, but I would not recommend to do that because maybe Warner Browser will fix this issue in an upcoming patch and then you play with wrong HDR settings. And now let's talk about HDRG versus dynamic tone mapping on and dynamic tone mapping off. And dynamic tone mapping off in this game is a very bad idea. When we compare this game with games like Dead Space, where we have no proper HDR settings and on the PC version, we're talking about a maximum peak brightness of around 6,000 candela. I recommend it, of course, to use dynamic tone mapping off to avoid clipping in specular highlights. This is not the case in this game because we can set up HDR in a proper way. That's why my recommendation is for this game, if you have this option, play this game with HGHG enabled. Dynamic tone mapping on is not a good option for me because HGHG just works really, really good, especially on the CX and the G2. What I found when I tested the game with dynamic tone mapping on that the HDR brightness setting 25 was already a little bit too much at some point, but this is again, own preference. It really depends what TV are you using, what your settings are, and if you play in a dark or bright environment. The only thing what I changed in the game was the HDR brightness setting, but this was because I played the game with HGHG enabled and I found it a little bit too dark on the CX and also on the G2. But this is my own preference, so maybe the standard factory is setting 25 is perfect for you. And last but not least, I can't say anything about Dolby Vision support on the Xbox. I'm quite sure you can play this game in Dolby Vision, but there is no native support for Dolby Vision. That means the experience what you have with Dolby Vision enabled should be very similar to HGIG, depending on your picture settings, of course, as well. But don't expect too much of a difference. Okay, my friends, so that's it for this video. And I really do like HDR in Hogwarts Legacy. It is not the best HDR what I have ever seen because for this we have Horizon Forbidden West or Gran Turismo, but it is on a very good level in my opinion. No black level rays or at least very, very, very minor. So no problem with that. And yeah, the HDR settings, they're working actually quite good. I mean, yeah, we have the problem with that they're actually outputting a little bit too much, but this is not a big deal in my opinion, because in most of the cases, you will not notice any clipping and specular highlights anyway, because you are busy with playing the game and that's how it should be. So far, what I played was really interesting. 
and I need to continue. But there are so many games coming out in the next days, weeks. It's I don't know how to keep up, actually. Anyway, thank you very much for watching me. I see you guys next time. Bye.